My Seven Chakras, episode 237. The best way to bring peace to those around you is by example. Live a life of peace. The Seven Chakras, swirling vortices of energy, positioned throughout our body, from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. For thousands of years, this ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to My 7 Chakras. And now, your host, Aditya Jai Kumar. What's up, Action Tribe? AJ here, host and founder of My 7 Chakras, the show where we dive deep into the ancient world to uncover nuggets of wisdom that will surely transform your life. So if this is the first time you're listening, then I want to welcome you to My 7 Chakras. Now, before moving on, let's listen to a recent iTunes review and hear what our listeners have to say about the show. With all that is going on in the world, this podcast is calming and motivating. The topics are informative and the guests are well qualified and Aditya is a fantastic host. I especially appreciate the way he reflects and clarifies each point the guest makes. Uh, I love this podcast. So this is by an iTunes user named Kudbi. Ashin Taker, if you have been listening to our show for a while and have loved the episodes and content but haven't left a review yet, then now is the moment. How does our podcast make you feel? Did you learn something new from our show? Have I inspired you to take some action? Or maybe did you recently experience a transformation? Whatever that might be, make sure you take a few minutes to leave your thoughts and views in the form of an iTunes review. The link you need is my7chakras.com forward slash review. Seven is a word, so that's my7chakras.com forward slash review. You see, reviews help us get more exposure and help spread the word one action taker at a time. All right, so we are now ready to bring you our awesome guest for today, Bill Phillips. Bill, welcome to our show. Thanks for having me. And are you ready to inspire? I am ready to inspire. Great. So Bill Phillips is the author of Expect the Unexpected. As a psychic medium who helps the deceased communicate with their loved ones on earth, he has helped countless individuals deal with their grief by bringing through validations, evidential information, and beautiful messages that bring a sense of peace. So we're going to learn a lot more about not only the book, but also Bill's experience with this and, you know, whatever he's gone through. Bill, once again, thank you for joining us and taking your time today. Of course. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So let's uh, begin with some inspiration. My question to you is, what is your favorite inspirational quote and how does that apply in your life? Oh, wow. Okay. So there's lots of quotes that um, definitely apply to my life on different days, just depending on how I feel. But um One that stands out to me is one that I actually put in my book, and it goes like this. The best way to bring peace to those around you is by example. Live a life of peace. So I I feel that in so many ways we are teachers sent to people and vice versa. And we really um, should be more aware that we do live by example more than anything. Um, And I feel that's a powerful statement. So... Yeah. Wonderful. So thanks a lot for sharing that profound quote. Action tribe, action speaks louder than words. And like we're learning today, the best way to bring peace to those around you is to start living by example. Start doing those things that you feel, even if it's a small step towards greater peace. If you do it, then people around you will take notice and you will set that example. So thanks a lot for sharing that wonderful quote. And with Mm -hmm. that, let's dive in. So, Will, what inspired you to write your new book, Expect the Unexpected. What is, what inspired me to write the book was um, really um, wanting to share my story and uh, in many ways sort of like demystify what a psychic medium looked like um, from, you know, what pop culture shows and in the movies. And I wanted to give people my um, true, honest, you know, a- approach as to what happened to me with the hopes that it, that it would inspire them as well to, um, you know, have an open mind to how the universe works and how spirit works around us, and to know that really, um, ultimately, um, when we uh, when we die, we we go on, and uh, that that's so important for so many people to understand. Uh, especially if they've lost someone near and dear to them, is that um, this is not the end. This is just the beginning. Um, So I I wanted to inspire people and also show them my story about what I had to go through, um, sort of like my challenges and also um, 
the uh, the trauma the the trauma that happened to me as a as a child that really I feel um, contributed to my awareness of understanding this gift and this ability. So I really wanted people to um, be able to go through my my story um, with the hopes that it would show them or maybe even teach them on how to open up the themselves psychically or in any kind of um, em- empathic way. So that's that's the primary reason why I wrote the book. Got it. So thanks a lot for sharing mm-hmm. that. Uh, you mentioned that yeah. one of your goals is to demystify what a psychic mm-hmm. medium looks like or to de- demystify uh, the the concept or what, who a psychic medium is. And also the other thing mm-hmm. is, you know, that life does not end, you know, as soon as you physically die on the earth that we live on, uh, right. you know, maybe... Uh, enter into another body or maybe uh, have multiple lives so uh, mm-hmm. talk to us about who is a psychic medium yeah there's uh, so there's there is a little bit of a difference there psychic and medium are, are definitely two different entities but Got it. Um, a psychic is somebody who can tune into the living to um, you know to energies of like what's around us what what's in our energy field our auric field um, uh, you know, past, present, future, and a medium is somebody who, in many ways, has to use their psychic abilities to tap into that energy, but we're able to go a little bit further with it where we are actually um, channeling information from the other side. So, um, you know, we've heard the term psychic medium, spiritual medium, uh, mm-hmm. but in many ways, um when you're a medium, you really do um, possess both abilities, but not everyone who is intuitive or a psychic would be considered um, a medium or a channel. So it, it's good to understand the difference between the two, and and it can you know it can seem kind of confusing if yeah. this is brand brand new to you. But really, what I like to consider myself ultimately is just as a channel, because I really just consider myself a channel from the other side to this side. Got it. Well, thanks a lot for those. Uh for clarifying the difference, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. people can, uh, uh, you know, uh, interchange both these words. So you said yes. psychic is someone who can tune in, but a medium is someone who mm-hmm. not only tunes in, but goes up above and beyond and is able to channel information from the other side. Now, yes. uh, Bill, uh, let's go back to your childhood. At the age of 14, mm-hmm. your mother passed away, correct? Yes. So how, how did that happen? Oh, it's a very um, long story, and I will um, definitely... Uh, leave part of it to the, the, the listeners to read mm-hmm. my story in the book, but mm-hmm. but primarily what happened was I was um, I was kidnapped by her when I was six years old and taken to New York, um, and for three years there, it's a very challenging time, you know, um, a lot of uh, not sure where home was and where, where my next meal was going to be, and uh, unfortunately, my mom um, suffered from a lot of uh, drug and alcohol addiction, so mm-hmm. um, three years three years into it, I was taken back to my family, to my father um, on the West Coast, and um, really basically was going from uh, the same extreme to the other as far as uh, this chaotic world, because my, my father also was involved with the same types of things. So so it was a very challenging, distraught, uh, toxic time for, for a child to experience. Um, and so I wasn't I wasn't allowed to see my mom, who was, um, you know, still really um, in the midst of her addictions and her struggles. And, I, and a lot a lot of it was that I wasn't with her. I think that aided in her, you know, in, in her trying to fill that void. Um, but uh, so long story short, I was able to um, fly back the same day that she was dying. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I was after after almost six years that had passed, I was able to see her, um, you know, on life support and basically say goodbye to her. Um which was devastating, as as I'm sure anyone could imagine, as a as a 14 year old, you know, the only child, and um, you, you know, it was very, very, very difficult. Um, and I thought my whole life was just completely turned upside down um, until uh, until about two nights later, mm-hmm. where I was awakened by her spirit, and uh, that's when for me everything, my whole perception had had shifted and changed from what I was sort of taught to believe 
believe and then sort of what was shattered of those beliefs based upon my own experiences um, with her. And from that point forward is when my life really took this direction Got it. Of, um, of understanding spirit on a much deeper level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so talk to us about, uh, you know, wh- what exactly happened? You mentioned that a few days later she appeared to you letting you know mm-hmm. that you know she was she was spiritually al- alive right so absolutely how did it happen were you, were you sleeping in your room at that point yes i i was i was sleep i, I wasn't in my room i was i was with her um with her boyfriend's family that you know okay. who, who she had a relationship with and um and i was sleeping it was in the middle of the night and i was and i woke up to her in in the corner of the room just glowing and i was i i was completely shocked by by the mm-hmm. experience and it, it happened so quickly it was like one of those it seemed like it was you know an eternity but it probably went by within 30 seconds or so of of this um and she just wanted me to know that she was okay and that she was going to help me and um and that's exactly what she did but it just took some time for that to really come together for me to understand and what what she meant by it because i didn't think that she meant that i would be <laughs> working you know as a channel for other people but yeah. that's exactly what she meant in that moment so and and over the next few years you kept experiencing some unusual energy within yeah. and around you right that you couldn't mm-hmm. quite explain at that point so how did that start with? yeah could you talk to us about that um yeah you know a lot of it was just my um a curiosity fascination with uh, um with death and with spirit and i felt like i was just looking back on it in hindsight i was just being given a bunch of downloads from her and from spirit you know things to to read things to sort of investigate so to basically um, open my mind to as what I had experienced. So mm-hmm. I had no clue as to what it was. So I had to really, um, you know, sort of get acquainted with metaphysics in a certain structure. Um, and then I had really strange things happen to me where other people that were psychic pulled me aside and told me that I had this amazing gift and that I was going to be helping, you know, many people in my lifetime with it. And, um, so for, for those three years, that's what happened. And, um, then when I turned 18, I found myself um, truly stumbling into a metaphysical shop um, mm-hmm. one evening, and uh, that's where that's truly where I understood what was going on on a deeper level because I did not know what was going on in my head <laughs> until I had other other like minded people around me telling me, "Oh my gosh, that's pretty amazing what what you just did." So you okay. know that really helped my helped me understand what my process was versus what I had seen on, you know, in, in pop culture or in the media. Um, at the time, I want to say the movie, um, the sixth sense was, was released uh-huh. around this time. And, um, you know, that's not how I experienced um, spirit. It wasn't that dramatic for me. It really was a very subtle mm-hmm. type of, um, a vision. And once I kind of tuned into that, it was very, um, revealing and, uh, and, for the people that I was tuning into, it was very, very, um, very healing, very validating to them. Got it. So you've mm-hmm. you've alluded to the fact that a side effect of your work is that you have spirits trying to communicate with you, to communicate, mm-hmm. to convey their messages to their loved ones, or yes. maybe to just pass on some information. So how do they communicate with you? I mean, can you hear their voices or or something else? Mm-hmm. Or? Yeah, you know, it's it's for every spirit, it's different. Just like okay. with every person that you meet, you would you know their their way of communicating. Some people are more, um, you, you know, uh, they use body language to communicate with. They use um, their tone of voice. But with spirit, since they don't have a physical body anymore, it's very much emotional based, um, sensitivity based, and for me, a very much. Um, auditory and also uh, visually based. So it's really just them sort of um, tapping into my nervous system, for lack of better words, and, uh. um, and giving me information through that, through that line of communication. So, um, you know, it does require a lot of concentration and it does require just being present and kind of getting out of the left side of your brain. And then once, once you achieve that for any channel or any medium, then the information just flows very, very easily. So, um, and, you know, a lot of people like to equate it to like playing a charade with them. And 
that's very, very true because they're trying the best that they're trying to the best of their ability to really um, show you things that are within your own reference mm-hmm. to validate to their love ones that they're okay so it could be that you know um that sally's mom's coming through and uh sally was was making her german chocolate cake recipe the night before and then comes in to see me and then her mom comes in and shows me the chocolate cake you know and so things Mm -hmm. like that to validate to them that they were around them that they've that they know what's going on that they're encouraging them that they're supporting them and that ultimately they're trying to get through to them to show them that you know life is so such a blessing and a miracle and to not think of it in any other way really just to kind of live in live presently live in the moment and and you know to to take the risks so to speak so they're always encouraging us to um to do that to basically live our dreams now over the years i'm sure that you've had many of these um, spirits trying to communicate with you communicate with you or uh, you've been mm-hmm. uh, receiving information what has yep. been the most memorable experience so far oh my gosh that is very 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 um that's a very good question there's there's been so many of them um i can talk about when i when i was first understanding how this worked for me um i i would i was having people you know like um the word was spreading. And so friends were, t- were telling friends and they were coming to see me. And, yeah. um, this is not like the most profound experience, but I will just kind of give an example of it. A lot of times when I am channeling, um, because there's no time where spirit is located, but we use calendars and clocks here in the physical world, there's yeah. always some things that have much more magnitude with the, with the meaning or the aha sort of moments that happen afterwards. So I remember when I was 18, I was um, channeling for this woman and her mom was coming through very strongly. And um, and her message to her was that she was sending her her long lost love back to her. And that's that was the message. And, and the woman like kind of thought I was crazy and said, oh, it's been it's been over eight years. You know, this person out of the country now that we have I haven't spoken to them in over eight years. And and she thought it was she thought that it was, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of kooky that I would say that to her. And, um, so then the next day I got a phone call from her, you know, basically crying hysterically on a voicemail, wanting to tell me that when she got home that night from, from our session together, that on her answering machine was a voicemail from her long lost love of, you know, over 10 years previously. So that's, that's an example of how it works to show that spirit knew what was going to happen so for her mom to get through to her for her to understand that she was truly there she had to give something that was that sort of like life altering to her to show her um that it was a genuine experience and also to show her that, that she wanted the best for her and that she was guiding her so um regardless of what came of that of that voicemail it was pretty profound that she basically got the memo about a couple of hours before it actually happened you know so that's what i mm-hmm. that's sort of what i what i've seen is that spirit likes to come together they like to sort of bring families back together i've had a lot of um a lot of people that have come to see me where you know someone talks about uh, a name uh, that's in the family and they have no idea about it and then they find out that it was like a long lost sibling or a long lost family member so um that's that, that's common too in some senses and um and and really just things that kind of transpire down the road that that they sort of notify us about beforehand really can um sort of help us prepare and make make better decisions and things like that but but Ultimately, um, you know, you don't need a medium for yourself. Um, it, of course, it's a wonderful experience, but you, you you can do it on your own if you are open and receptive to how they want to communicate Got with it. you. So, mm-hmm. so Bill, uh, like you've alluded to uh, earlier in our interview, you do believe in past lives, right? In the fact oh, that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh-huh. so on your journey, have you ever asked yourself this question, what makes the spirit remain in their spirit state? that is trying to contact you and communicate with their loved ones instead of restarting a new life as a newborn baby. Absolutely. You know, there's so many different um, schools of thought with this. And this is, mm-hmm. this is basically what they've shown me is that when they go, so let's say, um, you know, like mom has passed away, she's going to want to make sure that her family is um, guided and supported. So she's kind of 
hanging out, watching over, helping them, you know, in, in, in ways that she can, you know, they can't control all of our lives, but just trying yeah. to watch over us. And then when, um, when her children go, then they, as a collective group will, would watch over the grandchildren. So it's usually a couple generations before they actually, um, return to their soul oh, group. Okay. Once, once everyone's together up there, because I, I firmly believe that um, we come together in soul groups. It's, it's why you have, like, deja vus and why you feel instant connections to people, even outside of your blood family. It's like you could have a very strong friendship with someone that, like, it just fits like a glove, you know. And that, that's yeah. very much um, connected with being in spirit and really sort of... Um, sort of setting up this 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 blueprint of, of your life and what experiences that you wanted to have when you were in the physical form. So um, so typically and, and you know there there's this is not um, this is not necessarily a one size fits all type of uh, question, but um, I know that they usually wait a while to come back. Um, mm-hmm. Now I know that there are different schools of philosophy. I know that like like in Buddhism, they believe that they come back like within a matter of months. Um, and you know, to everyone's um, to everyone's uh, sort of experience, it, it is different. So that, that that's where free will comes in. You know, if you want to mm-hmm. come back, um, I've also had people that I read for where their children that had passed had come back again through a different pregnancy. You know, um, so that that that's right. common in some sense as well. If they didn't have a full life in this lifetime, they usually will come back and sort of uh, start over again, um, possibly even in a, in a different gender. Just depends yeah. on, on their path and also on what they set up for with their intentions because it's all about intentions. It's, it's basically using your intention when you are an energy form to create um, like a sort of like a contract of what you would experience Sure. Um, in the physical. So, uh, yeah. So, you know, really, um, there, there's no rules to it. But from my experience, that's what they have really um, shown me and communicated through me to their people that, that, you know, that are here still in the physical. So there you go, Action Tribe. We're learning a lot today about the power of the intention and the power of free will in the spirit world. Uh, you're learning about soul groups, soul contracts. Really exciting over here. Thanks mm-hmm. a lot for sharing, Will. Now, of course. Uh, my question is, uh, can you channel or have you channeled uh, with or received information from species from other galaxies? Like aliens, for that matter? Um, I, I can't say that I have channeled um, other entities like that, but I I have experienced some crazy things myself okay. personally, and and I, I I am open to that belief. I've I've met with other people that have had these experiences, yeah. and I definitely believe that it, that it is real and that it exists. And I think that to not think that we are the only life form here is kind of a little bit just uh, insane. So, um, and I also believe that the universe is never ending and that it's forever <laughs> going. And, and, uh, and, I, and I believe that in many ways there's um, versions of ourselves from the past and also from the future that are in different dimensions. It just kind of, it just kind of requires um, you being open to the other dimensions that are around us. And that's really what is, that's really why we're here in the first place is, is to come in and sort of use that knowledge to live the best life possible um, mm-hmm. in the physical body, you know. Got it. I've been told that the physical body or the life that we're li- living here on Earth is like a spiritual mm-hmm. playground, right? In that the Absolutely. spirit gets to yes. learn so many different things, oh, and yeah. emotions and feelings. Yeah, and I, I like to <laughs> consider it like a classroom as well, that uh, we've, like, we've come back to learn lessons that we really set up to learn. And they're usually about love and forgiveness and things of that nature. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, this, this really is, we, we really are... Um, privileged you know to be in a in a body and having these experiences so um that's what that's what spirit's always conveying anyways is that you know count your blessings you know so so let's talk about your your gift of being able to channel information Uh, Mm -hmm. does this gift carry with it a burden as well like did you ever at some point regret having your (sighs) gifts um when i was when i was young I was very, um, very nervous about it because at that time it wasn't as widely accepted as it is now. Right. Um, so I was, I, I faced the challenge of um, 
sort of letting this out of the hat, letting letting my secret out, basically. That that was a challenge in itself. Yeah. Um, but for for me, I you know there the the pros definitely outweigh the cons. Um, there are times where I know things that I wish I maybe didn't know, but that I have no control over. And then I, there are times um, where <clears throat> where I feel things just very strongly being in like a room with people or you know yeah. going grocery shopping or being in like a being in a crowded event. So I tend to not be in those events very often because I, I even at this stage of understanding and balancing um, my my frequency and my energy, um, my antenna, so to speak, it's still it still can be very overwhelming. In, uh, in groups of strangers I don't have any connection to because what happens is that I'm basically experiencing all these different emotions and different thought patterns. Right. Um, even, even when I am able to tune it out for the most part, it's still, it's still going on where I'm like, oh gosh, why am I so anxious right now? It's not my own. So it's, just, it's really just understanding uh. what's my own and what's everyone else's. <laughs> so that really helps put it into perspective but i would say that's probably the biggest um and it's not even a negative thing it's just it's just part of the territory of of sure. um of being sensitive is, is uh is really just understanding that you feel not only yourself but really the the feelings of the world in, in much of the sense mm -hmm. you know now, now mm -hmm. speaking about the about the ability of being psychic you, you mm -hmm. sort of said that we all might have some level of psychic abilities although yeah. we might not all be mediums right so mm -hmm. let's talk about the mm -hmm. psychic abilities how does for example someone listening to the show right now how does he or she go about finding out what psychic abilities they have or even if they have it yeah you know? i would um yeah i would encourage anyone who's who's interested to really um read more about the subject because when you read other people's experiences and see the um, the parallels between all of these people's worlds, it really opens you, it really opens your mind to another another thought process of of really just being aware. So, you know, when you have the um, the gut feeling of uh, of your mom calling you, and then within minutes your phone rings and it's your mom calling you, that's right. that's part of being psychic, and we all we truly all are that way. We're, we, we're all built that way. Like we've all come in here being pure channels, but then what happens is that we are programmed from an early age by either our parents or just society um, to really not trust it and to, and to fear it in a sense. Um, and we can thank, you know, the, we can thank the media for that or <laughs> whatever for that, but it comes down to having to break free of that of that programming in which takes you out of your trust of your own channel, your own GPS, really. Um, so I would encourage people to read about it, to maybe even like join like a meetup group somewhere or take a course about it somewhere, something in which you are um, getting, uh, absorbing like a sponge, you know, um, every possible uh, way to understand how this works. And mm -hmm. and really and really understanding that it's not so um, it's not so out there and, it, and it's much more simple than than we think it is. So you know, um, people may think like, oh, okay, to have an ability, you probably have to like see you know um, the the roof open up and like wind blow through and you know very dramatic things. But that's really not how it works. It really is that that hunch and that. Uh, that vision that's kind of like buried in your mind that you sort of experience, but you don't mm -hmm. give it a lot of credit to until a day later, you, you, your, your hunch comes true, you know? So really what it, what it requires is going beneath the layers of your conscious thoughts and understanding what, um, the difference between your conscious thoughts and your subconscious thoughts. So understanding the, the difference between your ego mind and your, intuitive mind and when, once you're able to understand the difference between the two um and you tune in to the intuitive part of your of yourself that's when that's when people really start to freak themselves out by what they're able to pick up on or even predict or or see um and i've seen this myself i i teach workshops um and, and i've seen people that that thought they had no ability um you know pick up on something so specific with somebody else that it just blows mm. their mind but it does require the person to um 
remove distractions, go within, and really go beneath the surface to be able to make that connection happen. So uh, also meditation, understanding what what energy is, understanding what the chakras are. It's a very important part of this, are the chakras, believe it or not. And also understanding how the different senses, the, the different clear senses connect to the chakras and how when we understand them and open them up, how we open our sensitivity up to um, receiving information like that. Got it. So let's talk about your book now. Your, your book subtitle, it reads, Bringing Peace, Healing and Hope from the other side so how do you foresee this happening for our readers Mm -hmm. um well in in the book it's me sharing um my story but also different people that i have had the privilege to um channel for over the years sharing their stories as well and how um really the 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 sessions were a gift that kept on giving afterwards where um you know certain pieces of information really came out of nowhere and, and validated to them um, that their loved ones were around them or that, you know, that they're opening doors for them, orchestrating events around them to show them that they're around. And that, in a sense, is very powerful and brings a lot of, a lot of hope to show anyone that um, we are being guided um, by, by more than just our physical world. And when people truly do have their own aha moment, because it may not be that it happens from reading a book or even having an experience with a medium, it it may be that they themselves um, sort of talk out loud to their loved ones and then boom, they have the, they have the validations. And, And so that's really why I decided to title my book the way that I did is because I, I feel that when we are open to something larger than ourselves, then, you know, AKA the other side, God, the universe that we are, that we're setting up the platform to receive peace, healing and hope. Um, and that's what life's all about is to give that hope to those who are, are desperate or who are in need of something larger than themselves. Got it. Mm -hmm. So based on what you've shared today, based on the stories that you've shared with our listeners, what is that one Mm -hmm. action step that you'd like to recommend for our listeners? Uh, One action. Okay. So, so um, in, in, in terms of, of, of developing this for, for anyone who is curious or, you know, a lot of people are, are afraid of being judged by other people. Um, you know, they, they've had their experiences, you know, they've, they've seen the light flicker when they're thinking about their grandma and um, they've had other crazy things happen. And they're like, gosh, this is, there's something to this, but, but they're so nervous about sharing it with other people. Um, I would encourage them to set the intention, you know, really just go within, set the intention that, uh, that they are brought to anyone um, that would be able to help them develop or to understand this on a, on a deeper level. And I also would encourage um, medi- a meditative practice as well um, to, to really tap into the frequency of intention and really to understand that, that, um, that the change on the outside of our lives always begins on the inside of ourselves. So action takers to access the show notes for today's episode, uh, go to my seven chakras.com forward slash two three seven. That's my seven chakras.com forward slash two three seven. Out of suffering have emerged the strongest souls, the most massive characters are seared with scars. Now this is an amazing quote by Khalil Gibran. Action tribe This is something that I've been thinking about for a while now. Each one of us is going through one challenge or another. And sometimes we feel like there is absolutely no way out of this particular challenge. That no matter how much you try, you feel stuck, you feel helpless, and sometimes powerless. We go to sleep hoping that we might wake up and find out that all of this was but a dream. So don't worry, this phase you are in will soon go away. There is a particular reason why you are in this place in your life and as your higher self knows uh, and that's the reason why we're trying to uh, learn ways in which we can communicate and connect with the intuitive side of us as opposed to our ego mind i found that there is immense power in suffering 
in going through massive life challenges because it allows us to really look deep within ourselves down to different layers and to get to know what are those things that are holding you back and once you address those issues and focus on them and take action towards them you are a changed human being because you look at life way differently and like khalil gibran reminds us out of suffering have emerged the strongest souls so bill take us back to a moment in your life when you had to confront a major life challenge how did you come across it and then what steps did you take to overcome that challenge okay so that is a great um question and actually i i do talk about it in my book um for me um i you know i i had this gift and i was afraid to share it with you know with the world and at the time i was also you know in high school i was in choir and had voice lessons and so i i really decided to push this down um temporarily and i wanted to pursue my uh my other gift of singing of of a uh, vocal performance so i went to a prestigious conservatory and while i was there um i kept getting i kept having challenges where where um you know people were un- were were finding out about this little secret of mine and it was very um at the time as a, as a early 20 year old it was very devastating that to have all this judgment around me um and that was very challenging and so when when i graduated um i was you know 20 23 or 24 years old i was um i was faced with um really having to share my truth and not living beneath a mask anymore um so that was very very frightening for me because i you know i was a product of a different type of a family of a of a very christian based family and um and so i was faced with the dilemma of okay either i'm going to keep this within and let it like basically eat me alive or i'm going to share it with people and and help transform their lives and so i I really had to surrender and I had to um trust my hunches of what spirit was showing me which was okay just do this we we'll, we will we will provide the people that that need this from you you just need to sh- open up shop basically and be true to yourself and um and honest with everyone so once I allowed myself to um let that truth flow and and really just kind of um remove myself from the opinions of people and what they were going to think about this i really found my empowerment in that in that moment and um so i decided to um you know open up um this every possibility i uh i made an announcement and sent out emails about it you, you know and mm-hmm. and and when i did that i i found that every time i made an announcement or every time that I told somebody about this that was that was difficult for me to tell there was a great feeling of power behind that because I I realized that I was I was accessing my personal power by speaking my truth and that was such a powerful transformation for me and then and then you know I wasn't known as the musician anymore I was known as the medium after this point and and that was is um that was very freeing for me because I I I knew in that moment that I was was really um honoring my true purpose of being in this lifetime which which was to do this work for people um and uh and I'm so grateful that I that I had the courage to you know um let go of my fear regarding how people were going to react to it cuz it doesn't matter what you do that there's always going to be some people that have a different you know opinion but i just you know i I've, i've learned to kind of stay stay in my light and to honor who i am and it's and i've and it's always been received very positively so um yeah well thanks a lot for sharing that uh, will based on what you've shared in just one sentence what is that one major life lesson that you'd like to share with action tribe i i would share that um we all have a gift to share in this life time and when we're not sharing it life seems to kind of collapse in on us it, it sort of seems to um you know dull our our purpose and our sense of being here but when we truly 
are open to sharing whatever gift you may have, living with purpose, living with passion, living with integrity, um, and truly focusing on what you feel is your gift to the world, um, then that's when your life begins. Well, thanks a lot for sharing that. You, uh, uh, Your story is really inspiring. You mentioned that you had a gift. You, you knew that you had a gift, uh, you know, based on what... Uh, you, you wrote your book today as well, but at that point you were afraid to share it with those around you. You yeah. and at one point you decided to sort of push this down to suppress it and focus on uh, the other gift that you had, which was singing, and you focused on vocal lessons. But you kept mm-hmm. having challenges again and again as people in your surroundings got to know about the gift that you were trying to suppress, and uh, that was challenging. Uh, because you didn't want that yeah. part of you, I guess, to come out. But when you graduated, mm-hmm. you decided that it was now time to share the truth and not hide it anymore. And that was uh, a difficult uh, process to go through because you had to surrender and trust the messages, trust the uh, uh, intuitive uh, messages and the hunches, like you mentioned, that spirit was trying to share with you. And when you mm-hmm. did that, it was sort of liberating. And I'm sure that many of our listeners can really relate to your story because we all have some sort of a gift or the other but we're trying to hide it and like you've uh, you know recommended or shared or you've given us advice we all have this gift when we're not sharing it our life seems dull we don't have the sense of being of being alive but mm-hmm. when we share it uh, our life changes so the, so the key is to focus on sharing your gift focus on discovering your gift Absolutely. so so Wonderful. Thanks a lot for sharing. Action Tribe, if you've learned something on today's session, then make sure you express your throat chakra by sharing mm-hmm. what exactly you learned on social media. Are you motivated about starting something new? Are you inspired to get healthy once again? Do you just feel a bit more happier? Whatever the reason might be, make sure you express yourself on social media and share the word using the hashtags my 7 chakras and hashtag Action Tribe. That's hashtag my 7 chakras and hashtag Action Tribe. And before moving on, I want to take a few moments to thank you, the listener, for joining us on today's session. This session would not be complete if you didn't join us today. I'm not sure what made you click the play button, but I'm sure that you did it for some reason that you only know. And I'm glad you did. If you're facing a challenge in your life, if you want to know what to do next, just know that that challenge is not here to stay. It is here to pass. Don't ever give up and take action every single day. If something isn't working, try a new approach. Read a book, listen to a new podcast, or even speak to a friend. Because if you don't have the answer, then I'm very sure that someone out there has it and is willing to help you. The universe, as we're learning today, needs you and your gift. Because you do have inner gifts that you haven't fully explored yet. And remember that there is no failure There is only feedback because as Thomas Edison once so wonderfully said, many of life failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. And with that, we've arrived at the very last round for today, which is called the Wisdom Round. So, Bill, are you ready for this round? Yes, (laughs) definitely. Great. So, uh, you know, this round basically comprises of four questions, uh, rapid ra- rapid fire round style, so that okay. our listeners can take note and take action. So my first question to you is, what is the best advice that someone has ever given you? Um, I think the best advice is uh, that I've ever been given is not to, not to feed fear, not to feed fear. So yeah. name one personal habit that keeps you going, that keeps you strong. Um, personal habit would be, um, meditation and chanting. It's part of my daily routine in the morning, actually. So I find myself, um, going within, clearing any, you know, um, energetic debris, being clear, and then also doing my chanting. Like one of my chants that I do every, every morning is, is a, a very powerful, uh, chant to Ganesh, um, the remover of obstacles. And I feel like that really sets up my day in a very powerful way um and i really do feel a difference uh within how how the events go within my day when i surrender everything to my higher power got it so name one book that you'd like to recommend for our listeners today oh absolutely well besides my book i would also like to recommend i just finished a book not too long ago um by an author called uh named gabrielle bernstein and it's called the universe has your back um 
Um, and it's about how to transform uh, fear into faith. And it's been very, very powerful. Um, and uh, and it's just very simplistic, uh, but it just talks about how when we truly tune into the frequency of love, that nothing else can get us down, especially the, uh, our fears. So very good book. I would highly, highly recommend it. Well, thanks a lot for sharing Action Tribe. I know that you love the books that are shared on the show. And I know that many of you get these books as soon as you hear them shared. And that's why Audible.com is offering Action Tribe one free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial so that you can get to check out this amazing new way of uh, going through books. You don't have to read them. You can listen to them just like a podcast. Now, in case you didn't know, Audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from for your different devices, including bestsellers like The Chakra System by Anadia Judith, Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, and A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. And I believe that uh, even uh, Gabriel Bernstein's book The Universe Has Your Back should also be there on Audible. To download your free audiobook today, uh, go to my 7 forward slash free book. Once again, that's my 7 forward slash free book to start listening. Uh, if you haven't tried it in the past, make sure you try it out uh, because it's a wonderful way to go through a book and much faster as well. <laughs> so, Bill, thank you so much for joining us today. It was really amazing to connect and learn about uh, your uh, your book as well as the stories that you've gone through in your life which is which are highly inspiring thank you uh, before you go tell us one thing that you're really grateful for and tell us the best way we can find you okay awesome um so the one thing i'm very grateful for is is life and 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 the opportunity to help people every day in a meaningful um, and healing way so that's what i'm always grateful for and people can connect with me through my website it's billphillips.com. My last name is spelt with one L and two P's. So it's bill, P-H-I-L-I-P-P-S.com. And you can also find me on Facebook as well under Psychic Medium Bill Phillips, where I do give um, my daily inspirations um, to all of my fans around the world. So, yes. Wonderful. Well, thanks a lot for sharing. Uh, thanks for coming on our show, talking to us about mediumship and the other side as well as taking us one step closer to a human revolution. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me on. You are listening to My 7 Chakras. Go to my S-E-V-E-N, chakras.com. Download your free gift, get inspired, and take action. Transform your life today.